Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with old-fashioned baked vanilla custard. That's right, you've just enjoyed a heavy, comforting, rich meal. And now you're craving something sweet and just as comforting for dessert. But you also want it to be very light and refreshing and super easy to make. Well, my friends, that list of desserts is very short, but this super simple vanilla custard is on it, and I am very excited to be sharing it with you. And to get started, the first thing we'll do is toss two large eggs into a mixing bowl, to which we will add a little touch of white sugar, plus to give it more of that old-fashioned flavor, a spoon of brown sugar also, and then we'll finish up with a big pinch of salt, as well as some vanilla extract. Of course, we're using the pure and the real. And that's it, we'll take a whisk and we'll give this a good mix for about a minute or so, or until that sugar dissolves and stops feeling gritty. Oh, and one production note, whenever we're whisking an egg mixture like this and we stop, a bunch of bubbles will quickly come to the top. And by the time you move the camera to get the next shot, it looks like you added something else to the bowl. But we didn't, right? I wouldn't do you like that. But anyway, once that's been mixed, we will stop and add the last ingredient, which will be some whole milk. And we'll go ahead and mix that in. And it's really the milk here more than anything that makes this old fashioned. Since these days, most people would upgrade to cream to get something that comes out a little thicker and richer. But for true old fashioned custard, we wanna just use milk. And we will talk more about this later. And then once our batter set, I'm gonna transfer it back into the measuring cup I use for the milk. So I could double check exactly how much batter this made. But also, it's going to make it a lot neater and faster to transfer into the ramekins, which is our next step. And because I have about two cups of batter, I'm going to use four five and a quarter ounce ramekins. And a good strategy here is to fill those up about three quarters of the way. And then once all four are filled, we can go around with the last tablespoon or two, making sure they're nice and even, which means these will cook at the same time. But more importantly, we won't have people fighting over the biggest one. Oh, and if you don't have ramekins, you could just use coffee cups, or some jam jars, or you could just pour all the batter in one pie dish. So as usual, we have options. And then once that's been portioned, we'll go ahead and pour about an inch of water into a baking dish, or whatever we're going to cook our custards in, which always helps things cook a little more evenly, and prevents the outsides from cooking too much faster than the insides. And as I place these in, let's talk baking temperature. All right, virtually every other recipe says to bake this at 350 degrees, but I like to go 325. So these cook a little more gently, which I think makes for a much smoother, more silky texture. So that's why I'm gonna transfer these into the center of a 325 degree oven for about 45 to 65 minutes, or until they look like this. I know it only looks like they've been in the oven for a couple minutes, and that's because they have. I had to pull them out because we forgot the nutmeg which is pretty much mandatory for any old fashioned dessert. So I'm gonna go ahead and grate some over using a very light touch so we get a fine dust. Otherwise we're gonna get large dark unsightly specks like that one right in the front. But the good news is you can use the tip of a knife or a spoon handle and it will stick to it and you can pull that right out. And that's it for real this time. We'll cook that at 325 until our custard is just set. And for me that took 60 minutes after which they're gonna look something like this, which may or may not look done to you, but that doesn't matter because we're not going by looks. We have to test these with the tip of a knife, and if our custard is just set, that knife will come out clean. So that looks just about perfect, which means we can go ahead and let these cool. And so that happens a little faster. I'm gonna go ahead and transfer these onto a rack. And by the way, do yourself a favor and use some tongs or a towel. Otherwise, people with non-chef fingers might get burned. Okay, that was even hot for me. And you're probably wondering then, why are you touching them so much? I have no idea, that's a good question. But anyway, we'll let those cool down to room temp, at which point I'm gonna transfer those onto a tray and then cover them and pop them in the fridge until they're thoroughly chilled, which is how I think you should enjoy these. Right, some freaks in nature do like to eat them warm, but to me, that just makes them taste too eggy. But anyway, you decide. I mean, you are after all the town scold of whether to eat these warm or cold. But personally, I chilled mine overnight, at which point I pulled it out and garnished it with three strategically placed raspberries. And yes, if you don't have to take pictures, these are perfectly fine plain. 
Speaking of the pictures, I went ahead and finished up with a light dusting of powdered sugar. And that's it, my old-fashioned baked vanilla custard was ready to enjoy. So I grabbed a spoon and tried to scoop some out so you could see how perfectly textured this is, which you're actually going to see a little better as I get into this. But whether you can tell by looking or not, this really is surprisingly light and incredibly delicate and silky and smooth. All right, there is just barely enough egg in this to keep it all together, which really is at the heart of the game of custard. Okay, whoever uses the least amount of binder to turn our milk from a liquid to a solid wins. Okay, I probably shouldn't make this comparison, but this is very similar, in mouthfeel at least, to something like a silken tofu. I know, I'm sorry, but it's true. If you've ever had a really high quality silken tofu, it is so light and pretty much collapses and melts as soon as it hits the palate. And that is sort of what we have going on here. So this felt exactly like I thought it should. And as far as the taste goes, that's much easier to describe. All right, this has a beautifully clean vanilla flavor, elevated by that subtly sweet custard, and that very, very faint hint of nutmeg. All right, for me, this is the epitome of old-fashioned comfort food, or at least comfort dessert. Although having said that, I do want to remind you, you can make this with cream instead of milk if you did want something a little richer and thicker on the palate, but then it would not be quite as old-fashioned. And even though you could serve this plain, and probably will, these raspberries, which really were for decoration, do work beautifully with those flavors I just described. So if you have the option, I would include them. Oh, and the last thing I'll brag about before I sign off, you know you cook these perfectly if there's no water at the bottom of your ramekin. If you cook these too long, you're going to squeeze out moisture and you'll see a clear liquid at the bottom of your ramekin. Okay, it's probably still going to taste very good, but it just won't be quite as silky smooth. So keep in mind the cooking times I gave are a rough estimate, and it really depends on the size and shape of your ramekins. So make sure you start checking early and often with the tip of a knife. And as soon as that custard is set, take it out and let it cool. Unless, like I said, you're one of these freaks in nature that likes to eat them warm which as I mentioned, I'm not into. But whether you eat these hot, warm, or cold, this simple treat from days gone by is very delicious and super easy, which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.